So, guy who gave me the smoking deal on the piston ring compressor and the uh, coolant, for motorcycle coolant, he had this box sitting there, and it said, whole box, a dollar. I was like, I looked in here, and I was like, son of a gun, this, this is an entire box filled with these brand new replacement uh, spouts for the plastic uh, jerry cans, or whatever you want to call them there. Now... This says right on it, fits old model, 9803 to 9805 only. So these might be completely useless. However, I got to tell you, I've got two or three plastic gas cans that over the years, these damn rings right here cracked and broke. All right. And once that happens... You're basically, the, the can's useless. Well, I never got around to throwing them out. I ended up using them as waste gas cans and stuff like that. And they're still sitting over in the barn. So I'm going to, at some point, I'll mosey on over to the barn. And if these fit those cans, then I'm going to be happy to just get a couple of these out of the thing. I mean, the whole box for a buck. I'm thinking that maybe he started the day with a dollar on here and that these were a buck a piece. And at some point he added whole box or somebody else did that. I don't know. But there's got to be, let's see. There looks like to be about 15 of them in here. Uh, 15 and looks like the remnants of a mouse nest. And actually there's some of these just loose in here. So they probably, I bet you these are from, maybe some of them got chewed up by the mouse goats. Just make sure that. There is not a live mouse in here. No, no live mouse. We're good. I should let my cat sniff that. I bet you she'd go wild. All right, so funny thing is, it is now Friday, October 19th. It's been a few days since I started this series. So this is most likely going to be a two or three parter. So we're probably on part two or part three at this point, guys. And that actually concludes everything I got from that. I'm pretty sure that concludes. Oh, no, wait. Hold on. One more little item. This is the first thing I think I bought from the guy who had the fluid. I saw these sitting there, and he had a buck on this, and I asked him if that was for all three, and he said, yep. And I was like, all right, sold. So for a dollar, I got these three thingamabobs right here, okay? Now, after I bought them, he said, yeah, and the great thing is they're 12 volt, and he said, because they came off of his Honda Goldwing. Now, my thinking was, even if they're not usable as is for some reason, my thinking was, look at how many LEDs are in there. All right? I mean, there's got to be at least 60 LEDs per. So I got like 180, over 180 LEDs here that if I want to... You know make some kind of project with but my thinking was especially if he's right and these are just 12 volt i was thinking maybe i could rig this up into some sort of a light for over at like the mill or the lathe you know what i'm saying doesn't that seem like a it might work so what we'll do before we close out this video i'll uh I'll put a little power to that thing and see what it does. Here's an item I bought near the uh, start of the show from a vendor, but I left it there until the end of the day because I didn't want to drag it all around. I went back and picked it up. And uh, I've got, this is another item that I tend to have a weakness for, that if I can buy them cheap, I tend to be buying them, and I haven't used one yet. So I'm now up to like four or five of these. This is a gear reduction unit, and this is a good one. This is a uh, Boston short for Boston Gear Company. Now, whoever had this was using it in some kind of application where clearly they needed a lever to be going up and down. So they had some sort of a, a crank, homemade crank system they got here. They took a pulley, they welded on this strap rod, and it's got a couple of holes in it. So that's what they were doing with it. I verified to make sure that the guy didn't tack weld the pulley onto the shaft before doing this bodge work here so i was happy to uh, see that when we when we loosen this allen screw we were able to pull this 
pull this off. It's stuck on there again now. The point is that should be a unmolested good shaft on there. Okay. Um, it feels good as far as backlash goes. It feels good and tight. It doesn't feel like it's all damaged or hogged out. It seems to rotate smoothly. I forgot what the ratio is. I did check it out. Uh, it's dirty. Uh, it's got interesting, it's got shaft coming out of each side, which makes it a little more versatile than a lot of the other ones I have. But uh, those of you who are in the, in the know, I don't have to tell you that this is an expensive unit to buy new. And I was able to score this for 15 bucks, which I think is a pretty good deal. Um, I've thought about a couple of uses for these and I still haven't put them to the test, but I, I thought about, well, if I get around to the SIP drill press project and finish that, I could probably use one on there so that I could use a 1750 RPM motor and probably get closer to the kind of RPMs that that drill press wants to see, which is much lower because it came off a, originally that would have been an overhead belt drive that would have driven that drill press. And um, the other application for one of these is uh, I had toyed with the idea of um, converting one of my two Delta wood bandsaws to a metal cutting bandsaw. So, anyways. So for 15 bucks, I couldn't turn that down. So I was looking around on Facebook, and lo and behold, I see an ad that was put up over a week ago that had... Uh, flown under the radar for me and I hadn't noticed it previously and it was for a brown and sharp micrometer and it was for a brown and sharp digital micrometer for 50 bucks and I was like well that's interesting I wonder if he's got some other items so I clicked on the person's name and it was woman to look at what other items that person had posted up and then I saw some other micrometers I saw a um uh, telescopic gauge set brown and sharp so this is a uh, telescopic gauge set this particular one here I have is a Mitotoyo and it's, it's got a little bit of rust was on one of these I cleaned it up enough so I could use it um, case is dirty so I've got this set of Mitotoyos and then I've got another set of SPI's that's in really good shape but they're SPI SPI, for those of you who haven't heard me mention that name before, stands for Swiss Precision Instruments, but there's nothing Swiss and nothing precision about them. Most of the stuff made by SPI is, is cheap import. So anyways, as opposed to like Edelon, Edelon, or whatever the name of that company is, Tessa Test, those companies there that make truly precision Swiss equipment. So anyways, this is a handy set to have. And this guy, or this person, this uh, person was advertising uh, brown and sharp ones uh, in the blue case, and they looked brand new. They looked beautiful for 30 bucks. And that ad was over a week old. Well, I contacted the woman and was placed in contact with her husband, who explained to me that unfortunately those have been sold because what had happened was when they didn't get any offers for it on Facebook they put it up on eBay and those ended up selling on eBay and he said they were actually just getting ready to ship those to uh, somebody in Wisconsin who had bought those so I searched on eBay for previous auctions and since this guy's close to me close enough he's about 40 40 minutes away um, I was able to determine which ones were the ones he had sold and they didn't sell for that much more than the 30 he was asking. Um, and the guy was paying shipping. So the guy who bought them got a decent deal. I think he paid like around 50 bucks. I got to look it up because that's bothering me now. In, in fact, it's right here. It actually sold for uh, $31 and $6 plus $6.70 shipping. So this guy got a really good deal on these. He got them for $36.70 shipped. I could have had these for 30 and maybe even 25 um, cash, but I didn't spot them in time, which is a shame. Uh, the it, It's funny because these normally, you see, when you look at previous sales, okay, that's the same part number, 
All right, the 599591-20. Uh, here's one right here, pre-owned, sold for 50 bucks. All right, here's one, new, other, so that's maybe new old stock, 90 bucks. 55 bucks free shipping. It, that was actually a little cheap, and I think the reason why is because of this photograph. I think he did himself a disservice by having this photograph. It it's not a great photograph and what this actually is is this is a picture of the box so unlike these other ones that we just looked at that were just the the gauges in the pouch um this gentleman had the original box and the gauges are in the older style black pouch but who cares so and he explained to me that not only that but he said these were like new condition. They looked like they had hardly ever been used. And it turns out this guy cleans out estates. And this guy lives in Rhode Island. And he was one of the guys who cleaned out Brown and Sharp. At least that's the story. So he said years ago he had tons of this stuff. And that, you know, he sold off a ton of it. And then he was just, I guess, cleaning up and found a few spare items left. So... We agreed I would come down and take a look at what he had left. and Of course, I was drooling over the proposition of uh, of possibly scoring some really nice new old stock brown and sharp type stuff, smarting slightly from the fact that these were, you know, the, the brown and sharp telescopics were no longer going to be in play. So I went down there and met with him and uh, looked at what he had, and unfortunately he didn't have much left at all. But I was able to get the digital micrometer. So the... Uh, case looks dirty and used okay but oh and this is for those of you playing along at home this is a micromaster 0 to 1.2 inch brown and sharp swiss made um a uh, 599-100 apparently is the part number but if you look at the micrometer itself it's perfect it is like new and battery was loose in the box apparently the battery was not it was not stored with the battery in it um this is either completely unused or somebody took really good care of it because it's clean as a whistle i do see evidence that the battery door has been opened and closed so there it is yeah okay now these are used They've just been well taken care of. They're definitely used because there's marring around the plastic here. You know, Steve, I guess you really should have done this last night. Check to see whether or not there's corrosion in here and to see whether or not these things work for that matter. All right. So I'm going to take a guess that this goes in this way. Well, let's hope that battery's dead. His wife actually had these up on Facebook for 50 bucks. He thought she had them up there for 75. Um, they had, I think they might have had these on eBay. I don't remember. But I think they didn't sell. I think they put a reserve on them. Let me double check that because I can't remember for the life of me. He does clean outs and he's a picker. So there's actually quite a few items they've got that aren't machinery related the only thing i can find right now is he's got this two to three inch brown and sharp micrometer two to three inch with adjustable tools and extra pin 599-3-32 it brought a high bid of 2150 uh and then he wanted 725 shipping and he didn't take that he had a reserve on it um they've only got like six positive ratings so they're pretty new to ebay um, but reserves on eBay don't work out very well. At least that's what my experience. Let's see what they sold. So there's the brown and sharp gauges for 31. And actually that's it for machinist tools. Okay, so they didn't get around to putting those digital this digital micrometer up. All right, battery definitely goes in with the plus side facing up. And actually that is a, that is a negative symbol right there. I thought it might be. And now I've confirmed it because I just noticed on the inside of the cover the positive symbol. 
So this is supposed to definitely go in like this. Of course, I'm not going to have a battery that size. This says unit set slash set. I would think either just spinning this would turn it on or pressing this button turns it on. There's no other buttons or anything on here. I'm going to hang my hopes on that that is a bad battery. Let's see if we can't measure any voltage. Yeah, it looks like a dead battery. Let me just double check this meter. All right, some good news here is that this battery, which is actually a dead battery um, still measures uh, 0.6 volts or so and this battery that I've been trying to use measures like 0 0.0 well, yeah I mean this battery is beyond dead so I think that's all we've got wrong here hopefully oh you know what I do have an I might have in my other digital micrometer, I might have one of these style batteries. Here's my other two. This one's a Fowler. I can tell just by the door that's going to have a different battery. Where's the battery for this one? Oh, I didn't leave it in there, did I? Son of a clock watcher. I forgot take the battery out of this one before I put it away this is a dead battery in here right now too the problem with leaving the batteries in is that sometimes they start to corrode Jeez, this is a pain in the butt to get the battery in out of this one it's like a little rubber door a little rubber molded door that you get a stuff in there there we go Just leave that in there so, oop, bet you that's what this hole's for. Leave it in there so I know what this uses for a battery. This one, I don't remember where I got. But this is a Digimic Plus. This is a different series than that one. This has got, look at that, the adjustment wrench has never been used. I don't think. Well, anyways. This uses two batteries. One really sucks down the power. Oh no, wait a minute. Maybe it only uses one battery and it had two in the box? No, it uses two. Alright. That isn't gonna tell us anything. I have to look up and see which one in the, which one of these is better. Obviously the one of the two brown and sharps is better than... Well, probably both of the brown and sharps are better than the uh, Fowler. But I'll have to see which one of these two brown and sharps is the better of the two. Keep one and sell one. That's ah, bugging me. I swear I had one of these 2032s. Brand new. Unused. Kicking around here and I just can't put my finger on it right now. These are dead ones that I have in here. If you're wondering why I don't throw these out, it's because some of these contain mercury. So it's actually a bad idea to throw these in the trash. Um, so usually what I'll do is at uh, some point when I get a decent sized collection of them, keep them in a little container, and I'll bring them to a place that recycles those kind of hazardous materials. They take fluorescent bulbs because they have mercury in them. They take uh, old NICAD batteries. Uh, lots of times your big box stores like Home Depot and that will accept that stuff. Anyways. Oh, and uh, especially the old style thermostats that have a mercury switch inside them. It's got a glass vial inside there, and you can see the mercury inside there. And uh, that's a quite a bit of mercury in there. That mercury is one of those uh, metals that um, really can a small amount in your nervous system can really wreak havoc. So it's dangerous. Enough about my soapbox, right? tree hugger hey what's wrong with that oh so I, I was able to go online and show him that this was on there for 50 and I said I was my plan was I was gonna offer you 40 and he said I'll take the 40 since you know he figured that she made a mistake or whatever I don't know but I got this for 40 bucks if I put a new battery in it and it works perfectly fine then that's a good deal
So then looked at what else he had, and he showed me the micrometer that we just looked at together online that he got a high bid of $21 and change for, but he had a reserve on it, so it didn't sell. And I almost passed on this because I don't need it. It's a two to three inch. And he had his notes on here saying he wanted 25 bucks for it. So I guess the reserve was almost met. But because I was standing there in front of him later on when I didn't get much else, I looked at it again and I said, you know, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. And he said, yeah, sure. And the reason why I decided to get take the 24 is because I was looking at it and to me, it looks very uh, unused except for the fact that it's filthy. It's got oil all over it. So some somebody had really dirty hands and was handling it. But the weird thing is, the original wrench and everything looks like it's never been out of there. The paperwork looks, you know, fairly un, unmolested. There's an extra rod in here. Which, no, that's a standard, a rusty little standard, two inch. But I told him, I said, I think this will clean up. So I took a chance on it. I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to put that to the test right now, that theory. I got my LA's Totally Awesome degreaser. I think this is going to be the ticket for this particular job here. Oh, look how pretty that came out. That's that's got that satin chrome finish on it, as opposed to like this side. It's still got the old grease on it. It's not engraved. I've never seen a tool that was worth more because it was engraved. Sometimes it doesn't make much of a difference to somebody. Other times it does. Carbide tips, in case you're wondering. I don't want to get. I don't want to get any of this liquid into the barrel area, so I'm just gonna saturate the cloth a little bit so I can get this. Oh well, so much for that. Oh, that cleaned up really nice. That cleaned up nice. Now, <laughs> now I'm wondering. I want to go look, go back and look at that. Uh, go look at that listing he had there, because I'm curious. This bag is dirty on the inside. Hmm. I'm curious what the uh, photographs of this thing looked like. Maybe that's what kept the price down. I mean, well, it's. I think I actually searched for this style. Uh, this number. This is a 599-3-32. Includes standard. Oh, so that standard actually is supposed to be in here, even though it, even though it looks kind of rusty. Ah, don't worry. It was just the cap. Standard didn't fall. Relax, people. There's the listing for it right there, and I don't know if it's showing up that great on the camera, but I can clearly see all of the dirt and uh, grease marks and stuff all over this. So anybody looking at this would see that it's clearly used. Whereas if I were to relist this now, after cleaning it, uh, someone might surmise that this had, in fact, had very little use. Which I actually still think that this has not seen a lot of use. I think that somebody just was handling it with filthy hands. So I gave, tw I gave 20 for this and uh, 40 for the... Uh, digital mic of questionable operation and then he had a couple other items there but he wanted too much for him the only thing that I uh, was intrigued by was he had a flex a Jacobs flex call up set an eight piece one uh, I offered him 40 for it he felt that was too cheap I raised my offer to 50 before I walked he still decided he didn't want to take that he felt that it was worth more than that I felt one. I found one on uh, similar on eBay and showed it to him that had sold for like 75. So you know, my thinking was, but I think there were some other ones that were quite a bit more. 
I think he was thinking his is going to bring more, you know, over a hundred dollars for that set. Sadly, though, you know, it's it's not worth taking my time to try and explain to somebody who doesn't know about these things that those sets were larger and that they had different things. I mean, there's one. There was one in there. It was over two hundred dollars. It had the collet chuck with it, so it wasn't just the collets. It was the chuck with a collet set. Obviously, that's worth more. You know. He wanted, I think he wanted me to give him 75 for it or something like that. I was like, oh. I told him, I said, hey, if you find somewhere in this, you know, all the stuff he's got here, if you find the call it, Chuck, I said, I'll give you a lot more. And uh, he, he said, no, I know that I don't have it. So that was that. And then we we're poking around. He was trying to show me some other stuff. He found some horizontal milling cutters that were new in the box. I've got some of those now. I've got no use for them. I don't have a horizontal mill because uh, of the weight oftentimes they're not even practical to ship so selling them is not really that great of a boon um did find some drill bits actually that's funny let me get these out of the way first because they're laying on top of the drill bits in the box so i ended up getting these this pile of reamers for 15 bucks i didn't even want them i passed on them initially and what ended up happening was he wasn't able to make change so finally i just said you know i'll take that 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 uh group of reamers for 15 bucks and we'll call it even i just wanted to get the heck out of there it was late it was a long day for me this was on my way home that i stopped um I'm, I'm lousy with these reamers now i've got to really sit down and start maybe going through and i'm seeing there's a funky one it's got a pilot on it 20 millimeter cut Counterbore, cap screw counterbore, 20 millimeter. It is somebody got $20.99 $20 price on that thing. Anywho, um, well, that is not a reamer. What is that? I think that's some kind of a tap. Funky one. I don't know. Vintage Cleveland 11 sixteenths reamer, $30. Yeah, good luck. That might be new. I hate to buy that new today. Anyways, who cares? Yeah, so in, in that mess of uh, reamers, I ended up getting a, looks like a bottoming tap of undeterminate size and a little boring bar and the counter bore. Well, let's take a look at the drill bits anyways. Uh, so I got this box of drill bits for 15 bucks, and uh, unlike the cheap Chinese drill bits, these are all these are all good U.S. made ones. They've been around for a while, but they don't have a lot of use. Um, this one's just marked HSUSA with an M. Okay, big M in a in a like a box. So I wonder if that's a Morse drill bit. This is a 23 30 seconds Red Shield Standard Tool Company, Cleveland, USA. Look at that little, look at that. It's got a little red colored shield. That's quite the schmancy logo they got on there, huh? But anyways, the, the point is, these are good drill bits. Good quality, old American steel. Look at that one there, huh? Never been spun, but it looks a bit, eh, maybe a little bit, maybe a light spin. Somebody took that one for a light spin. As opposed to this one, which somebody took for uh, a long spin. Another one of them M1s. M1, not to be confused with the Abrams tank. Here's another standard tool company one, 23, 30 seconds, but this one is not a red shield. It just says standard tool company, and thus the shield is not red on that one. Oh my goodness. Could drill bit talk get any more boring? Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. That's an extra long one. Oh, I wonder if that's... I wonder if somebody made that and brazed that on there. Or No, that's not. That's shop made. That's for when you get to reach down inside and drill that hole. All right, enough of that. 
Yeah. Probably shouldn't have bothered buying these either. If, if you ever saw how many drill bits I have now, I got tubal cane piles of drill bits. No, no, even worse than that. Keith Rucker piles of drill bits. All right, how to determine how to light these LEDs? Well, um, in this particular case, silk screened onto the PC board where the two wires connect there's actually a positive and a minus uh, plus and a minus sign so it's positive and negative so they're actually telling us the polarity which is good the white wire is the negative and the brown wire is the positive if these were black and red it would be pretty pretty uh, self-evident that the red was positive and the black was negative in this particular case, they're using white for a negative and brown for a positive. So we know the polarity. So this is DC. We have polarity we have to contend with. If we reverse the polarity. If it's low enough voltage, it won't, it won't harm anything, but they won't light. If we put too much reverse voltage into it, we could damage the LEDs. So the next question is, well, how much voltage? Well, these supposedly came off of a... It says California sidecar light bar strip. So that makes me think that this is actually a, a kit for a uh, LED light kit for a Honda Goldwing sidecar and not the Goldwing itself. So it would make sense since the motorcycle's electrical system is a 12 volt electrical system. It would make sense that this would be 12 volts to run this. But just out of curiosity, I was wondering how are they using 12 volts with no voltage reduction to make these LEDs light without putting too much into them? Because a typical LED uses one point, the voltage drop on an LED is typically 1.8 to 3.3 volts. 1.8 is typically for a red LED, 3.3 volts for like blue or white LEDs. Um, so upon closer examination I can actually see the silk screening on the uh, the, the uh, layout of the etching or the copper traces on the actual PC board I could see that the negative or the ground runs all the way down but I noticed that I can actually see connections between each LED for the first six LEDs then I see a, a break in the connection then I see six more then I see a break. Then I see six more. Then I see a break. So it became evident to me that what they're doing is this is probably a two-sided PC board. So we've got traces on the other side that I can't see. And what they must be doing is they must be running these in banks of six LEDs. If you take 1.8 volts and you multiply it by six, you get in the neighborhood of almost 12 volts because you're, you're not far off. So it would make sense to me that you could put six of these LEDs in series and light it with 12 volts safely. So that's what I believe they're doing. So now the question is, well, you got a lot more than six here. Well, don't remember, we have, don't forget, we have banks of six. So what they're probably doing is they've probably got this set up so that we've got a bank of six LEDs in parallel with another bank of six, with another bank of six, with another bank of six. So we've got a series parallel circuit here. We've got six LEDs in series, in parallel with six more in series, in parallel with six more in series, and so on and so on. And by doing that, that's how you're able to feed 12 volts into this thing and not fry it. Now, sadly, because it's 12 volts, I've got a sneaking suspicion that these are brake lights, and I should have thought of that before I bought them. I'm thinking, oh, I can use these to light as lights around my milling machine or something. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good use for them. The only problem is these are probably red. So I've got this AC adapter. It's a 12-volt uh, Panasonic AC adapter. Uh, sorry, it's an AC to DC. So this is putting out 12 volts DC. The center is negative, and the outer is positive. Wow, those are bright. 
Man, are those bright. It's amazing how bright those are. You probably can't appreciate it on the camera because if you look at them from the side, they don't look that bright. But as soon as you look at them head on, they're blinding. I'll blind the camera. How's that? How's that for bright? The lights are bright, but the guy who bought them isn't too bright. I only paid a buck for the three of them. I, somebody might be able to use them. I don't know. The other thing is he only had three, and I'm wondering, it almost appears to me like maybe there could be two on each side maybe, so four total, because they are, they are shaped differently. So that's like shaped, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with these doesn't matter anyways because I can't use them for lighting on my uh, my wonderful uh, machinery here. Oh well. This is the final item. Yay! And this I got from him for 10 bucks because I told him I would take a chance on it for 10 bucks. This may be a sleeper item. So let me show you what we got here. So get a load of this. We've got a box and on the box, it says the taps, bushings, and special cap screws in this box are loaned for your convenience to ensure the greatest degree of accuracy in the repair of your hardinge compound slide rest. Instructions are enclosed. Important, please complete your repair work as soon as possible. Other organizations are waiting to use these tools. The items in this box are the property of and must be returned to Hardinge Brothers, Inc., Elmira, New York. So this is quite interesting to me. This is very old by the looks of it. I don't think they're going to still expect people to honor this deal about returning this thing. Who knows? But uh, I thought that was really kind of cool. I th you know, it's funny that they would have a limited number of these floating around, that, that, that they would actually, you need to get this back quick because we got other guys waiting to use this tool. Uh, really? Eh, I don't know about that. But uh, compound slide rest, so it must be to do a repair on your cross slide. So, uh, or, well, technically the compound. So here's what's in the box. <clears throat> I'm no expert, but what it looks like we have is it looks like we have two special taps with very long shafts on them. And what looks to me to be a new lead screw for your compound. Okay? And three bushings. And there's one, two, three cap screws here. Actually, see, there's a hole there for another cap screw. I don't think this belongs in this box. I think this is a lead screw somebody purchased. And then I think they left it inside this box. So I think it's quite possible that there's supposed to be even maybe two more taps in here. I don't know. Because there's a hole right here that I bet you that fourth cap screw goes in there and then like I said we've got these special bushings there's ugh, three bushings in there and they're stuck in that wood pretty good from being in there for years alright so uh, I have no idea what the value of this might be furthermore I have no I, I have no way of knowing what what uh, compound what model lathe compound this is supposed to repair. So uh, I'm thinking originally there was probably something on the side of this box, number or something. I'm going to see. I'm going to look at it on the magnification and see if we can't see something else. All right, I'm confident we're never going to see if there was anything written on the side of this box. I'm confident now we're never going to see what it was. It's, it's that, that badly uh, worn. If there was a label here, I don't know. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all these components and remove this wood block from the box in the hopes that maybe there's an instruction sheet underneath here. Nothing. Just a good 
healthy coating of mold. And that screw would have gone in there. So, we're either missing a couple of taps or this is how this came. And then I think, like I said, I'm pretty sure this is just an extra lead screw that got left in here. Because remember, this is supposed to be tools. This doesn't look like a tool to me. This looks like a an actual lead screw. This lead screw alone might be worth a few bucks. I did see some lead screws, compound lead screws for hardened lathes on eBay. Um, I don't think I saw any that had sold. I think I saw people asking, you know, close to a hundred bucks for these things. Maybe, well, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, so if I just put in hardened compound uh, screw, first thing that comes up is hardened compound slide repair lead screw, new other, $125 in free shipping. But that looks like that might come with other components. Further down here, we've got one hardened compound slide lead screw, $100 or best offer. That looks like it might be what I've got here. Yep, that, that looks like a match for what I've got. So, question is, what does that fit? This says, Hardinge Original Equipment, new 10-pitch left-hand thread. It will fit Model B bottom slide. Well, I'd have to do some checking to see whether or not that's a 10-pitch and all of that. But the other problem is, I don't know if anybody ever bought any of these. Let's see if anybody ever bought one of these. See, look at this, somebody bought the whole cross slide compound for $100 used. But then there's somebody who paid $550 bucks for that one. Oh, that must be a special one. $388, $377. Da, 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 da. No lead screws. No lead screws. Mm hmm. Well, I certainly don't want to keep it because I. Don't think I'm ever going to be fortunate enough to have a hardened lathe, but uh, you know that somebody could probably put that to good use. Well, supper time. Guess it's time for me to head upstairs and call it a night. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, please subscribe. You never know what you're going to get on this channel. Uh, I do flea market finds, uh, occasional small projects. Occasional big projects where I bite off more than I could chew. <laughs> All right. Take care.